Greetings everybody, Jacob Saint here, bringing you some great bonus content. I am both very excited and very anxious to bring to you these journals from my childhood. Now in a few episodes of the show, I have mentioned briefly previous experiences that have fed into my belief in how I see the supernatural and the paranormal. What I haven't done is elaborate on those experiences. When I was a child, namely between the ages of 9 and 13, I had multiple encounters with what I believed were spirits, ghosts, apparitions, or whatever you want to call them. Now, it affected me so much that I eventually had to see a counselor, and the counselor had me start these journals, and those journals are what I'm going to share with you now. I never intended to share these journals with anybody. They are, after all, very private, and very few people even know they exist. My decision to share these journals with you was not an easy one to make. Ultimately, I believe it will add to the show, and who knows, it may even help some of you that are experiencing or have experienced these events before. Now, bear in mind these are the journals of a child that are not very well detailed, not very well written. Now, I have cleaned them up, corrected some punctuation, and tried to make a little bit more sense out of what I was writing so I could share them with you and they would make sense. Now I have vivid memories of these events, some of which were very repetitive, meaning the same apparition appeared multiple times, while others were isolated events. The entry that I'm going to share with you today is a repetitive encounter. It is the first of the many encounters that I have with the one I have dubbed the Bad Man. I hope you enjoy. March 22nd, 1998 Last night, I saw him. He was standing in the corner next to my bedroom door. He didn't have a face, or arms, or legs. He was tall like Mom but he didn't have any hair. I looked at him, and he looked at me. I didn't want to close my eyes because I knew he would get me. I laid still and didn't move. He didn't move either. He didn't have eyes or a mouth, just the shape of a head and shoulders. I didn't make any noise. It was quiet. So quiet I could hear my mom walk down the hall to her room. I didn't scream for her because I didn't want him to get her. He never said anything, but I knew that he was bad. I laid there staring at him, and him at me. The next thing I remember is mom waking me up for school in the morning. The man was gone. He's never there when it's light. End of entry.